Hello, I am Allie and I am a big royalty nerd. I have a TikTok account where I post all of the fun parts of royalty, mostly the jewels and the fashion, but also whatever else I find interesting. And this is my first YouTube video, so bear with me as I get used to YouTube and making videos on a platform other than TikTok. Uh, it is my guess that you came here from that TikTok account, so thank you very much. King Charles II of England reigned from 1660 to 1685. While he had 12 children, none of them were legitimate, and therefore his successor was to be his brother, James, Duke of York. Charles was known as the Merry Monarch due to the claims of hedonism in his court, but religion still played an important role in his monarchy as well as in the politics of the day, and at his insistence, his niece, Mary, daughter of James, Duke of York, was brought up Anglican. James himself was Catholic. In the year 1677, Mary wed her cousin William, Prince of Orange, and I am getting that pronunciation from Google. I am probably saying it wrong. If you watch my TikTok videos, you know that I cannot pronounce anything properly, but that's what I'm going with here. <laughs> so for context, William's mother was Mary, Princess Royal, and she was a sister of both Charles II and James, Duke of York. After their wedding, William and Mary relocated to the Netherlands. Their marriage was strategic and would eventually have long-lasting ramifications. It's unclear exactly when William and Mary acquired it, but they did come to possess a rather large uncut diamond. And despite the recommendation to cut the diamond into two smaller stones, Mary insisted on one large stone, which is the Stuart diamond we know today. It was first set into a brooch, it is 40 carats, just under, and takes its name from Mary's House of Stuart. In 1685, Charles II died without a legitimate heir. This meant that his brother took the throne as King James II. Mary was now heir to the English throne. James's ascension came despite being Catholic, and this was also at a time when there was a lot of friction between Catholics and Protestants. Cause for concern started bubbling up Essentially, from the beginning of his reign, he suspended parliament and attempted to rule by decree in the hopes of creating a parliament that would fully support him. But things really came to a head in 1687 and again in 1688 with the Declaration of Indulgence. The Declaration of Indulgence allowed religious freedom in England by ending laws that enforced conformity to the Church of England. It also allowed people to worship at home however they wanted and this was greatly opposed by Anglicans as it essentially meant that people could practice any form of religion. The declaration was reissued in April 1688, and James was met with even more opposition from Anglicans, and this time they meant business. In June of 1688, James Francis Edward Stuart was born to King James and his second wife, Mary of Modena. He represented a possible Catholic monarchy, and that was unacceptable. On June 30th, 1688, William, Prince of Oronia, received a letter from seven English nobles stating that if he were to land in England with an army, they would support him. And so he did, in November 1688, with 14,000 men. King James went into exile, and Parliament declared William and Mary co-regents. This entire event is known as the Glorious Revolution, and it led to the creation of the Bill of Rights 1689, which greatly limited the powers of the monarch. Mary passed away in 1694 from smallpox, with William dying a few years later in 1702 from pneumonia. All of their jewelry and possessions were returned to the Netherlands, including the Stuart Diamond brooch. We're skipping forward to the year 1793. At this time, William V was the Prince of Oronia. He is distantly related to William III, but the relation, as I said, is distant, and I don't want to bog you down with royal family trees because we all know that they can be a mess. <laughs> In any case, William joined the First Coalition, which was a series of wars much of Europe was involved in leading up to the French Revolution. The situation turned negative for William and it became clear that the Dutch Republic was under threat from invading armies. So in 1795, William and his family fled to England. During this time, William's wife, Princess Wilhelmina, had the jewelers Rundle and Bridge take the Stuart diamond from a brooch to a pendant necklace. 
In 1813, William V's son, also named William, landed back in the Netherlands to a population that welcomed him after a French occupation. In 1815, he declared the Netherlands a kingdom, making himself King William I. In 1897, the Stuart Diamond was placed in a tiara frame for the investiture of Queen Wilhelmina. She is the great-granddaughter of King William I and his wife, Princess Wilhelmina, who first made alterations to the brooch. She also wore it on her wedding day. The diamond has remained with the tiara ever since, although it can be removed. Queen Juliana wore the tiara throughout her reign. Most notably, she wore it on a state visit to the United Kingdom in 1972. Interestingly, Princess Beatrix, former Queen Beatrix, never wore the tiara, so it was Queen Maxima that finally brought the tiara back out in 2018 on a state visit to Luxembourg. She wore it without the Stuart diamond, and she did take two of the smaller diamonds from the top of the tiara and wore them as earrings. She wore it again in 2018, this time in its full glory on a state visit to the United Kingdom with the Stuart diamond on top. Queen Maxima also wore it on a state visit to Germany in 2021, and this time she wore it in a third, smaller setting. And that's a little bit about the Stuart Diamond. That was a very general overview of the Glorious Revolution. Um, I am not an expert on history or royalty or jewelry or anything like that. It's just something that I really enjoy and I've acquired this knowledge over the years and I'm really happy and excited to share it with other people that also enjoy it too. So if you are interested in things like that, please subscribe. I will be posting more videos probably once a week, but more once I, you know, get used to making YouTubes. Uh, but I am on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find it all in the little description box down below. Thanks.